Hey 678ers, welcome to the last night of regular Smoop. Some of you, you have been coming to your Smoop since the beginning of this year. Some of you maybe, you've been a part of your group for three years. Well, it's not completely over, but tonight is the last night where it's gonna look like this. Remember, next week we have our baptism service and the week after that, we're having a paint war. But for this week, we're ending the series that we started last week that was called Either Or. And so if you were here last week, you know we talked about the person of Paul and how he had this either or decision he had to make. Was he either going to live for God or keep living for himself? And ultimately, Paul picked to live for God. And today we're gonna to talk about how we can make that choice too, even when it's really, really difficult. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, Growing up, for some reason, it was really, really difficult for me to do the right thing. And it was very, very easy for me to do the wrong thing. In fact, I have this, this memory in my head of when I was so incredibly little, maybe honestly like four or five years old, where my dad was telling me I had to come inside, but I was playing outside with my best friend and neighbor roll in and my dad was like, nope, you have to go inside, it's time for dinner. And I yelled at him, nope. And then he did that thing that dads do sometimes, he started counting. And I never knew what was gonna happen when he was done counting, but I never wanted to find out. And so I knew as soon as he started counting, I had to be inside of my house. And so I remember with as much anger as I could muster, I yelled at my dad and I said, I hate you, you chicken head because it was the worst thing that me as a five-year-old could come up with in the moment. And then fast forward a little bit, you're probably like, well, you probably matured and you stopped saying rude things to people, right? No, I can think of when I was in like eighth grade and I'm on the soccer team and I remember I was on this team, guys, we lost every game. And it's because there was only like four or five of us that really knew how to play soccer. And it was this, this co-ed team where some of the girls were really good and some of the guys were really good, but some of the girls were really bad and some of the guys were really bad. In fact, a lot of the girls that weren't that good were only on the team so they could hang out with the boys that they thought were cute. And I remember there was this one girl on the team and she was terrible. And I remember there was this one game where we almost felt like we could win and someone passed her the ball. She was on defense and they were just moving the ball to the other side of the field. They passed her the ball. I kid you not. The ball got right in front of her and she like picked up her foot in her arms and she like laughed. The other team got the ball and scored and we ended up losing the game. And I ran over to her and I said, Elizabeth, it would be better if you just sat down. The truth is, as I got older, I continued to be rude. I still wanted to say mean things, not just that. I can remember being in seventh grade and having an opportunity to cheat on my science homework so I could get three bonus points on my test. And you know what I did? I took that opportunity and I cheated. And then when the teachers found out that I had cheated, you know what I did? I lied to the teacher's face. Why? Because it was so incredibly easy for me to do the wrong thing. And gosh, it can be so incredibly difficult to do the right thing. Guys, here's a truth for like everyone in the world. When you're a kid, nobody has to teach you how to be bad. Like, like did you ever have to be taught how to hit your brother in the face? Or how to be greedy and not share? Did you ever have to be taught to lie? No, you, you didn't. You just began to do those things on your own. Those things came very naturally to you. Do you know what the things were that you had to work on? You had to work on telling the truth, even when it was difficult. You had to work on sharing. You had to be taught to control your emotions and to not hit people and to be kind. Why is it so easy and so natural for us in moments to sin instead of for us in those moments to do the right thing. Well, we touched on this last week, guys, but it's because all of us have something inside of us that we call sin nature. Here's what I mean by that. All of us, from the second that we're alive, from the second that we're born, we have this thing inside of us that seems so natural that just wars against godliness and it wants us to do wrong things. It's that thing inside of us that wants to get revenge. It's that thing inside of us that tells us to lie, that tells us to cheat. 
It's that thing inside of us that wants to do that thing that we know is ultimately harmful and not good. It's that thing inside of us that wants us to be disobedient. And the truth is, we have it our entire life. In fact, the Bible talks about this. In fact, if you have your Bibles, you can get them out to the book of Romans. Chapter 5, verse 12, it says this. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. And then it goes on in just a few verses later in verse 18 to say this. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. But Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. Guys, the Bible tells us that when Adam sinned, it started this thing that happened in all of humanity that with every kid Adam would have and all the kids that they would have and that they would have and that they would have, all the way until us now, that we would be marked by the sin that Adam committed. That we inside of us would have this strong desire, this, this like second nature inside of us that would want us to sin. The Bible says that because Adam sinned, all of us became sinners. And it's true. When we look back to when we were younger, we can see it was so easy for us to sin. It was so easy for us to do the wrong thing. It was so easy for us to mess up. It was actually hard for us to do the right thing. Naturally, when we are born, we are sinners. Naturally, when we're confronted with either or decisions, our nature wants to pick sin. It's not until we have a relationship with God that we have now a desire to choose godliness. That in those moments when we see the opportunity to sin or we see the opportunity to follow God, that we would want to follow God. But just because we become believers doesn't mean that that sin nature goes away. In fact, a lot of the time, Satan will speak into the sin nature in our life and will try as hard as ever to get us as believers to feel separated from God because of the sin in our lives. We'll try more than ever to get us to lean into our sin nature. And then more than that, for us to think that our sin nature isn't sin. We said last week, all of us have to make this big either or decision. Either we're gonna live for God or we're gonna live for ourselves. And I'll say it this way today. Either we're gonna live for our sin nature or we're going to live a life for God. Either we're gonna say yes to what our sin nature inside of us wants us to do, or we're going to tell it no, and we're gonna live for what God wants us to do. But listen to me, you cannot get both. Multiple places in the Bible, you can see these, these long lists of things that the Bible would call sin. And sin really is just separation from God. So what these things are, are there things that you would do that would separate you from God or that would separate you from God's plan or God's best? Things that for people who love Jesus, we should try really hard to not do, that we should acknowledge is against God. And again, there's, there's a few different uh, lists like this in the Bible, but I want to spend some time right now looking at one of those in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to start reading in verse 9. It says this, Don't you know that people who do wrong will not receive God's kingdom? Don't be fooled. Those who commit sexual sins will not receive the kingdom. Neither will those who worship statues of gods or commit adultery. Neither will men who sleep with other men. Neither will thieves or those who always want more and more. Neither will those who are often drunk or tell lies or cheat. People like that will not receive God's kingdom. Now, I just want to pause for a second. Because if we're honest, if we look at that list, I think all of us can say some things on that list apply to us. Like we've cheated or we've lied. We were greedy because we always wanted more and more. 
Maybe there are other things on that list that, that you connected with. And it can be really, really easy to see that and then feel like it's over. If me having done that thing means that I can't be in a relationship with God, then, then I feel like I've already lost. Well, guys, listen. Thankfully, that verse doesn't stop there. In fact, in the very next verse, it says this. Some of you used to do those things, but your sins were washed away. You were made holy. You were made right with God. All of this was done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was also done by the Spirit of our God. Guys, listen to this hope. And the Bible tells us that before we met Jesus, we all lived one way. In the either or decisions we had to make, we always picked living for ourselves. We always picked living out the sinful nature. And he said, that's how some of you used to be. That's how we all used to be. But listen, it is possible. It is possible to be washed by the blood of Jesus. And it is possible in those either or moments that we find ourselves in in life to say no to our sinful nature and to say yes to God. But listen to me, it will be difficult. And we cannot do it unless we have Jesus. So I just wanna ask you a couple of questions. Actually, kind of coming from this, here are some things I want you to kind of work through. One, the biggest either or decision that you ever have to make is either you're going to have a relationship with Jesus and live for him or not. My question to you is, have you made that decision yet? And then listen, here's, here's the second thing I want you to process through. If you have made that decision, are you in those moments where your sin nature is fighting you to do things that you know are not good, is pulling you to do things that wants to separate you from God, are you saying yes or are you saying no? I know it's difficult and it can feel so natural and it can feel like it's such a part of you because it's been with you forever, but listen to me. God has something so much bigger and so much better than any of those things. I think it's important that you know I mean, based on the verses that we read, that your sin can never permanently separate you from God if you want to have a relationship with him. But listen, if you want that to happen, you have to make the choice. You have to choose Jesus. And part of choosing Jesus means choosing to live the life that he has called us to live in our either or decisions when it comes to either living out the sin nature that's inside of us or living out godliness. We've got to choose godliness. It is difficult and we will mess up, but it's necessary. If you've never made that, that big first either or decision to follow Jesus, listen to me before you leave group today, I want you to make it. I want you to talk to your group leader. I want you to pray together and I want you to make the decision to follow Jesus. But then listen to me, if you already love Jesus and you know you are saying yes to your sin nature and no to God, and you continue to do things that are against God and against what God wants for you, I want you to talk about that with your group leader too. If, if you're bold enough, talk about that in group. And as a group, pray for each other, encourage each other, and keep each other accountable. In life, you will have plenty of either or decisions. Listen to me. In those moments, pick Jesus. And if you can't figure out how to pick Jesus, if you spend time in his word, and you spend time connecting with him in prayer, and you spend time connecting with other believers in things like group, it will be easier. Guys, have discussions. Thank you for connecting with Smoops this year. Come next week to the Pickerington campus as we do a baptism service. I'll see you guys there.